everybody. Um, my name is uh, Katie Jinks, um, and I have been working with 171 for a couple months now. I am a new instructor, um, and today I am going to show you guys a couple uh, different techniques for making baskets out of recycled uh, magazines or newspapers. Um, what you're going to need to start out with um, is a stack of magazines. Um, you can use magazines or um, I used some old ads that we got in the mail, um, a Harbor Freight ad, a Kohl's ad, anything like that is good. Um, also newspaper um, works well. Um, it'll be a little flimsier, uh, but um, it, it will uh, work just as well. Um, and some glue. I've just got a regular old glue stick today um, that we will be using. Uh, any craft glue is fine also. Um, and something to roll up your paper with. Um, I've got a chopstick here. I've used bamboo skewers. You can use a pencil. Um, Anything like that is great. If you use the pencil, it'll be a little bit thicker, um, which is totally fine. It works just as well. And um, a couple, uh, one thing I didn't mention in um, my description, um, you can use some pins. Uh, if you want to make a bigger basket, it, it really just depends on how much, uh, mag how many magazines you have, how much material you have. Um, so I'm going to make some smaller baskets today just to show you guys everything um, but if you uh, want to make a bigger basket you might need to walk away from it um, so I recommend some bobby pins or some kitchen chip clips work really well too um, just to be able to walk away for a few minutes and come back to everything um, so I'm going to show you a couple different techniques um, to spend um, making your baskets. Um, I have a technique where you weave the bottom um, into a square basket um, and that is a little more time consuming. Um, so I also have an option you can cut out two um, cardboard cutouts of a, a circle or you can do the square pattern really any pattern you want um, and we'll build the basket off of that um, that way is a little bit quicker just to the same size you can use any thing in your house you want to kind of trace it out um, you can use corrugated cardboard um, if you have kids you're trying to do this project with um, they can paint it um, you guys can get really creative with it but that just kind of speeds things along a little bit if you want an easier time commitment there. Um, so for everybody joining new, my name is Katie Jinks and we are going over our basket weaving techniques. Um, we're talking about some materials you can have um, to help you along the way. Um, so the biggest thing with all of this is just making the pretend wreaths. So normally baskets are woven out of different natural materials. Um, so we are going to try to imitate the shape of them um, with the paper the magazine, the newspaper. Um, and they're going to kind of look like this when we're finished. Um, and they just all link together. And then that is how we are going to um, make long enough material to weave our baskets. Um, so I started out with just a bunch of magazines already ripped out. Uh, if you have messier edges, I even like further and like ripped open, that is totally fine. I would start rolling from that side so it kind of hides it within the roll. Um, and I'm going to take my bamboo skewer and my piece of magazine just like this. Let's see if you guys can see that. Okay. And we're just going to roll it up. And 
I leave it hanging out a little bit so the bamboo skewer or the chopstick or pencil, whatever you're using, doesn't get stuck. You can blur out. I've had that happen. It's not enjoyable. And then this is where your glue comes in handy. And you are just going to glue the edges here. So there is a little triangle up top. Move you over again okay so there's a little triangle at the top there that I put all the, the glue on um, glue stick works pretty well here if you just have like a craft glue Elmer's glue that is totally fine too and then you have a little reed so you're gonna make a bunch of these um, I have some made I'll make a few more here with you uh, they I rolled it up pretty tight. You can, uh, if it loosens a little bit, that is fine. Um, you can see different varying sizes. If you use the pencil, it'll be different. Um, and it's kind of nice to have a little variety because you do want them to link up. Um, you'll kind of naturally get a bigger edge and a smaller edge on them. Um, but um, if you have it a little looser and a little tighter on different ones, that is just going to be a little bit helpful. Um, when we go to make the basket, um, just so they link up easier. You want them to kind of come together quite a ways so they stay together as well. So let's make a couple more wreaths for our basket. Okay. And then another thing I like to think about here is one side of this is kind of plain and the other has a lot of color. So I want to roll with the side facing down that I want to kind of show up. Pages that have a lot more color are going to look like this. Um, and then pages that are a lot of text are going to look like this. So you can kind of try to curate um, how you want um, the colors to pop in the different sections based on that. So like I said, our two options today, I'm going to make a round basket that's got a shortcut bottom um, with two pieces of cardboard or I'm also going to show you guys a square bottom basket um, and you can kind of pick which option is best for you based on how much time you want to spend making your baskets. Um, uh, when if you're looking through a magazine I recommend not trying to use uh, perfume at like perfume sections uh, those pieces are a little too thick so we want something that's got a little strength to it but also is pliable when we actually go to weave the basket um, so the perfume um, ads are usually a little bit too thick for that um, similarly the covers of ma uh, magazines and even just like flyers uh, seem to just be a little thicker. Um, if you have sheets and you want to use those, I recommend using them for the vertical pull, poles in it, um, not the actual ones that we're going to weave horizontally. Um, so let me grab this camera so you guys can see again what we're doing here. So I'm going to pick which side of paper I like. We're going to try to get some of that blue um, and I'm starting diagonally one corner to the next okay trying to do this one-handed okay so we're just rolling just like that if it loosens up a little bit, that's fine. Like I said, some variation is nice. It doesn't have to be exact. Sometimes I end up with that perfect little 
uh, triangle at the end and sometimes I end up with more like a very oblong you know I, I definitely got out of track on the roll and that is fine this is not about being perfect by any means okay so we got plenty here to roll let me see what we can so the next step, um, this is my shortened version. Okay, so this is just circles we cut out. This is a Reese's box. I'm going to show off the little Reese's on it. Um, and then the other version is going to end up looking like this. I'll try to do a smaller one with you guys here. This size is going to be about the size, I think, to keep some mail in. Um, it is seven of the magazine's rods going um, this way, and then six are woven going the opposite way, and there's three sticking out on each side. Um, I think a better version would be to have an odd amount on the side. I think ending on the odd makes it a little bit easier to weave. Um, and the biggest takeaway here today is figuring out how to prep the magazine material and get some basic weaving down. Um, if you have some weaving experience, you can definitely use more complicated techniques than what we're going to do here today. Um, I just wanted some different options for you guys, depending on how much time you wanted to spend with this project. Um, So if we're going to do the shortened version, um, I'm going to just start gluing these on like a star. And then this piece of cardboard is going to be the inside of my basket. It's going to sit up just like this. Um, I already have one glued on here, so I'm going to glue one right below it. Um, and this way you don't have to measure and draw any pattern on here. You can just kind of eyeball it based on where the other one is sitting. And I want to give about an inch to an inch to actually glue this on here, um, just so it's secure. Okay. So like I said, this is the faster shortened version. Um, the only difference between these two is a little bit different shape and the technique on the bottom. So the square one is a little bit more time consuming um, and we will get to how to make that one and then I will show you how we're going to weave the sides on both of them. So the side weaving is going to work for both styles of basket here. So now I have glued these on. almost as little four, four points. And you can really get creative with what you're using for the bottom here. Um, you could make something out of magazines to stack up and then glue them in. I'm going to kind of sandwich these in between two pieces of cardboard here to hide that um, seam, to hide all of these little glue spots. Um, and then another thing uh, while you're making your reads to be aware of is magazines and flyers tend to have Staples. So you want to keep an eye out for staples um, and make sure you pull those out when you can. Right down some glue all here. Um, and then another great thing that I did not mention in our description of our event is having a clip. Yes, Lori, we will have the video up later to watch. I can give you a quick little recap here. We have not covered too much just yet. Um, we are uh, making fake reads um, out of magazines or newspaper um, to make the basket with. 
Um, and I've got a couple different options here depending on how much time you want to spend weaving the basket. Um, and, you know, there are plenty of versions of this up on the internet. I'm just trying to kind of distill them into something that I, you know, that I have, have had experience doing that has worked well. Um, but I've seen a couple different versions of this online. So right now I am doing the shortened version um, that is great to do um, with kids or if you just don't want to spend as much time on the bottom. So I've taken my reeds and um, glued them in a little star shape, just starting with the top and then I did the bottom and then the sides um, and just kind of eyeballing it um, to make that pattern. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue our top. I want it to line up because I am I'm showing off my little Reese's pattern on here for this basket. Um, like I said, you can draw any kind of design on this cardboard you want. Um, if you've got kids helping you do this project, um, you could have them paint this the day before and then you know, assemble everything the next day or after it dries. Okay. So the Reese's Puffs is the bottom here, and then the inside is this back portion. And I'm just going to let this sit here and dry for a few minutes. I'm going to set this to the side. So, um, I can show you guys how to make a few more of these reeds, and then I will start to show you the square weaving. Okay, so again, we're taking a pencil, a bamboo skewer, anything you've got that's kind of skinny. Um, we're starting at one corner of our magazine, and we are rolling diagonally to the next corner. Um, we will not be able to make a full basket in our time frame today, but I'm going to show you all of the steps. Um, so your first thing is going to be to rip out a bunch of magazines and roll them. You can see that this is not a perfect triangle at the end, and that is a okay. Um, it's okay to have them different thicknesses because um, we are going to link these up into a longer chain to actually weave them. Okay. All right. And then this one was nice and colorful. If you rip it out and it's really jaggedy, that is not a problem. Just roll from the jag more jaggedy end in. Um, and you want your more colorful side facing down so it shows up when you roll it. Um, if that's what you want, you can have like an all white with text basket if you'd like. Um, but I think what is really fun about these is all of the different colors that you can make out of it. Um, so our other option for bottoms. Okay. Our other option for bottoms is this square pattern. Um, and so this pattern is um, probably about the size to fit um, some mail. It'll, this is the bottom and then all of these reeds are going to stick up. Um, and you can make it as tall as you want. So really however big the basket is, is dependent on how many magazines you had. Um, this basket will probably end up being like uh, two and a half or three magazines here. Um, so this dimensions here are, there's seven little round reeds going um, this direction, and then woven through them is six um, reeds going horizontally, and they're kind of inner, um, inner opposite, and I'll show you how I got that pattern here. Um, 
if I were to do this over, I would probably keep it odd on both sides. So this is seven, and I would probably like just have left this as five, um, if possible, just to make it a little easier weaving it so you can keep your pattern going. Um, but once we are weaving, sorry, my last one kind of broke. So once we are weaving, it's okay to something skips or anything like that it's really easy to hide in this pattern so I I really wouldn't worry about um, perfection especially if you're going for a bigger basket um, it's not a big deal so I'm gonna try to do like a, a mini version of that square basket just so we can see everything and then I'll start to show you how to we weave the sides of the basket so I'm gonna start with a couple um, reads right here. Um, so we'll do like a three and two pattern. So I'm just like holding them. I'm just laying them out equidistance apart. And then I am going to grab a couple reads to go throughout. So for this, I'm going to link up at least two. When I was doing that smaller square basket, if you're going to go with that pattern, that was um, two of these reads interconnected. Um, and as you work with them, they're going to get a little flimsier. Um, so you really want to try to get them connected while they are, that one's a little too big. Um, try to get them connected while they are still, um, nice and round and strong. So I kind of had to shop around to see, to find one that kind of fit each other well, the bigger end with a smaller end. Um, and you want it to go at least an inch or two in. Some of them are going to fit in deeper than others. Um, it's not really a science here. Uh, the less connection, the, le the more likely it is when you actually go weave that they'll pull apart. Um, so I'd say at least an inch or two in there um, just to kind of keep them together. And then I'm going to, I am going to flatten this out a little bit here um, to make it easier to work with. I'm going to flatten it almost to the tip, but I'm going to leave my tip round just because it is easier to interconnect them when they are round. So I'm going to flatten it here so I can do a little weaving and leave the tip round, rounder. So, you know, if you get one that's not working well for you, hopefully you've got enough magazines and you can just kind of sub them out um, depending. Um, that is kind of the, the biggest downfall with these is sometimes they just kind of um, get a little harder to work with the more that you handle them. Um, things like uh, you know, the newspaper might tend to do that. Um, and the Harbor Freight ad that I used to make the square bottom um, definitely tends to do that. Okay, so um, I'm just going to lay these equidistant apart and you can kind of finagle them as you go and then I'm gonna okay, wrap that around I don't know if that's enough maybe I'm gonna grab a fourth one I just want enough to kind of show you what to do here um, but also have some for us to weave with later okay so I grabbed a fourth one just so we can get a better like pattern going um, and I'm not really counting the end one in the pattern so I'm gonna do two rows here um, to start out and it's the first one is kind of the toughest um, just because there's nothing holding it together yet um, let's see. let me get it started a little bit here and I can show you what we're doing So I am at the end of my first row. I'm going to wrap this around. Okay. All right. So 
so if we come in here, we can see. Let me get. I'm just going to flip this camera for us. Maybe. Come on, bud. Hi. So um, I've laid out these four reeds equidistance apart. I'm starting from the right side. So this one's going to finish from the right side. We are doing the bottom to our square basket. This is a little different than a regular pattern. Um, and we're going to weave two rows at a time here. Um, so this one is going under. I mean, it's going to kind of get tucked in and around. This is a, this is a tail we're going to tuck into it. And this is the reed that's actually going to be going up through our basket. Um, and I'm going to add one more reed to this because if we do an odd number, then we get the, then we'll be able to have this coming around and it'll loop better. Let me get that started for you and then I can show you guys that. It's a little difficult here just because it takes both your hands um, and like a flat surface to actually get the this part started. Um, so like I said, this is the more complicated version. Um, you can do the other version with the cardboard bottom and just kind of glue things on and it's a little a little quicker and easier um, for sure so I'm gonna I can still kind of move everything around so I'm gonna just move everything down so I can have my odd number okay so I adjusted this um, just so let me put a clip on here so you guys can see it and once I get a couple going I can start tucking the tails on so this is what we're working with here it's yelling at me to rotate it Sorry guys, it's a little clunky. Um, so five reads to start with. Um, start with an odd number. On the demo, on the one that I showed you, I did seven, so it's a little bigger. Um, and I started on this side. I just tucked the tail in with my bobby pin here. Um, and I just wrapped it around. And then we went under, over, under, and around. Um, and that's how I think of it when I'm making this, just because um, it's just important that the, these two are opposite here. Um, when you're making this bottom, the end pieces um, are always going to be kind of like wrapped around. Um, and then we went over, under, over. And the reason that I wanted to have that odd number is so when I get to the end here, um, this reed that's going up, it's going to serve as um, a supporting rod for my side of my basket. And this reed going up, um, I want it wrapped around this bottom one here. Um, and that will be true now for all of them. And I will do another one this way um, to show you guys. Sorry, it froze there on me for a second. So I can um, do one more and it should be a little stronger. So again, we're linking at least two rods together. You can do more, but it's just easier right now to kind of have just two going on. Um, just so you're not so long that you're hitting everything around you. So what I do with that, I want to keep things round when I link them up. So I leave um, about an, an inch or two close to the end round so that I can link them up again in the future um, when I need to. And I'm going to kind of flatten this a little bit 
so it's easily more easily workable. Um, if you if you have a piece that was part of the cover of the magazine or something like that, it's going to be thicker and less pliable. Um, so I find it difficult for this weaving section. You could have it on the end. This is the piece that I just wove through the bottom and it's gonna be sticking up in the final basket. You could put thicker pieces on there connected um, if you wanted to try to use utilize that in your basket. Um, that would probably be the best place to try that. Um, otherwise, any of the spots that you're gonna be doing a lot of the weaving um, it's just gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult that way. So I started on, I can't hold that up, I'm sorry. Don't wanna destroy it. So I started on the right side here. So now we're gonna try on the left side. We're gonna, we're gonna start on the left side and that's all you're doing for this square bottom. It's just um, going, you know, changing which side you're starting on whatever side you start on, you're gonna leave a little tail um, and wrap it around. I can start above and wrap it below, that's totally fine. And you're gonna have a little tail sticking out there. Um, and then I need to go under because I went over that one last time. So it's just that basic weaving under, over, under, over. So I'm utilizing moving both of these sections here to kind of make this work, um, especially in the beginning here when I'm just trying to solidify the pattern. Um, I do recommend trying to pin this at the beginning um, until we can get it all set. Once you have a woven pattern, you can kind of just tuck the tail um, back into the basket. So now I'm at the end of the one row and I'm going to go around and I don't think of this as an over or an under. Um, it just makes it easier. I just restart by looking at what I did last time because that's kind of going over but I need to go over the next one. So that is why I just like to think of it a little bit differently. It helps me keep it straight. Okay, so this is, like I said, a little bit more complicated technique. So this is the bottom if we're trying to make a square basket. This was one section of what I think of it as one continuous read, right? And then this is the second one, and they're each spanning two rows, okay? And we're going to go over... And the, the actual ones we're weaving with are going to be a little flatter than the ones sitting down on the ground. So those are going to give us a little stability. Um, and these are going to be just a little flattened out so they're workable. Okay. So now I have a lot better form. I can hold it up pretty well. Um, that is, is the bottom. So I will turn it around for you guys. So I started with five reeds sitting down flat on my table. Um, they are, let me check the time here, okay. Um, they are an odd number so that we can keep um, this pattern going. We want to work with an odd number of weavings, okay. And um, these are my two tails. They're the start of it, um, and I'm going to tuck them in behind. You can either do it as you go, or you can do it at the end. But this is how you're going to make a square bottom to your basket. Um, these are going to serve as the sides, and then also these will fold up for your sides as well. So you do, you do want to start a little bit further in. If you're making a really big basket, that is great. Just add on to them. That is all you have to do. You just stick more rods on there and you can make your um, basket, you know, as big as you want, okay? I'm gonna try to tuck these guys in. Um, you can use a little glue if you want. You can also just go ahead and 
tuck them in on the back there. Um, I do. I like to do like a little bit of a combo there. Um, so that is kind of the basis of it. And then all together, it ends up looking like this. This is a slightly wider one. Um, and this is the finished pattern. And you can see that I tried to keep it like color consistent. So you could see that there's two rows for this first. That was actually the last row. So I'll start down here in case that makes a difference. There's two rows here for this bottom, like green and yellow, and then two rows for this black. So it's two rows and only one thing is sticking up on the side. So you're going to have a longer pattern on the side than on these shorter sides than the longer sides. Um, so either way you choose to do your bottom. This one I would recommend putting longer longer reads on for the sides. So they stick up kind of short and I've added more reads onto them um, to hold them up so you can start weaving through them. Um, you might need a second pair of hands here. I see sides. And again on this, the first one is going to be the most difficult there. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to try to show you guys how to start weaving the sides with this star pattern that I made. We need to add, I had a, I had a malfunction here with them, so bear with me just a moment. I just want to try to get through all of these steps for you. If anyone has questions um, about any of this. I would be happy to answer them. Um, I'm tagged in this post, so you can try to message me directly. You can comment on here, and we can go over anything again. Um, just since this is a little bit of a shorter version. Right now I'm just fixing my um, original bottom. I'm going to weigh this guy down because he is not perfectly... Um, set. I would say that you might want, if you have another glue option, you might want another glue option than this glue stick just for this section if you're doing the shorter version. This is the version I recommend if you're hanging out with kids, trying to have a fun activity for them. Um, Try to weigh this down with this little teacup. Okay. And that should be enough. Okay, so this is the quicker version. So you can either weave a square bottom with the technique I just showed you, um, any size. It's just that same pattern over and over again. You add reads if you want it wider. Or you can start um, by cutting circles for your base and sandwiching the reads in. Okay, so we went over that earlier in this video. So that's what it looks like. I've got a little weight in here. So I'm gonna build up the sides of our basket so we can show you how to make that. Got a bunch of books on over here. Okay. So I'm gonna make a little structure like this and hold it up. Okay, so this is a lot easier. You're gonna do the same thing with your square basket. Um, you're going to add reads so you have something to work with. Um, you're just going to you just keep linking these all together. Um, if you have only a couple magazines, um, I recommend a smaller basket. Um, but here we go. So they, these are the vertical structure. I'm going to put a little hair tie around them just to hold them in that general shape. Um, just so we can keep things moving. Okay, and then I had a couple, okay, perfect. So I have already kind of linked together a couple of these reads. 
And I'm going to start, I'll start on this side that you guys can see. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if I link under or over here. Um, and I'm just going to wrap this uh, around like so. 